Hi, this is Manny from Manny's Makings, and today we're going to do a Create With Me Steampunk Fun. I have no idea where I'm going to end up with this. I have some things that are sort of floating in my brain, so I pulled out a bunch of stuff, just so I could have lots of things to play with, and I want them around me while I'm working. So, I have some cogs. Um, I have some little square button or beads that are look like metal. I have some 4 millimeter and 2 millimeter um, metal beads. I have some bigger metal beads. I have some um, jump rings and black. Who knows? Um, I have some chain. Um, and this one's an antique copper. Uh, sorry, um, brass looking one. And then I have um, some antique copper chain as well. I have some hematite beads. Some more little, little baby cogs. These are really tiny. Um, I think love these beads. They're too big to use for most things that I do. They're six millimeter fire polished, but they have like a, a metal coating on the outside and they have some color. And I thought this might be fun for a pop of color. Not sure. Um, I also pulled out, these are um, eyes you can buy at Michael's. Uh, this one is Steam 179 um, Dragon Eyes Earth. So I just pulled out some eyes. Um, these are not ones that I made. Um, they're fairly inexpensive. You can pick them up yourself. Um, I have some beaded beads that I made. Um, uh, you know, that you can use them for something like this. They look sort of like one of those little light things. Um, fuses or whatever. I just was playing around a little bit. I made a couple of coils. Um, I have some other coiled beads, different shapes. This one's sort of a rectangle. This one's a square. Um, some more where I was making jump rings and I changed sizes and it's got some weird step ups and, but those are perfect for like steampunk. So I keep all those little scraps and bits and pieces and we'll see where we end up. I have no idea. Tools wise, uh, the standard tools, everything that I'm going, I eventually use will be sh um, shown under the show more button. You just click below and you'll be able to see all the items that I actually eventually use in this project. Um, the other thing is uh, also, um, obviously I need some wire. So I picked out an antique brass, uh, 18 gauge sort of for my base. And then I have three different colors. Uh, one's hematite, one's uh, antique silver or titanium, and then bright silver. Um, if I'm going to do some wrapping, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, that's the whole fun of this. Um, oh yeah, I have a key as well that I kind of thought was kind of cool. Um, yeah, so dig through each dash, see what you have that's kind of fun, um, make a, a few coils, uh, don't make a few coils, do what you want. That The whole fun part of steampunk is that it's, it's very, um, although it's mechanical, it's very organic. Um, there's lots of spirals and turns and things like that that go on um, with steampunk and things get wrapped around things and around to, to make them look gears like things are in motion. So we're going to just have some fun, get everything ready. I'm going to clear a little space so that I can actually start working with some wire and we'll see where we end up. Who knows? Okay, let's get started. I decided I'm going to use the eye. I kind of think it's fun, even though I may cover it quite a bit. Um, and I cut off, I don't know, 14 inches or so of wire just to start with. Uh, I'm going to find approximately the middle. It doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to make myself a little bale. Um, doesn't have to be that big. So I'm scrolling this around until I get to the center and bringing it around. And that way, that's up top. Um, when I start, so I have something to, maybe I'll do other things, but I have something because I can bring the wire up too. So I have two pieces of wire. I'm thinking one of them should be coiled. Um, so when I'm working, but I don't know what I'm doing on both. So I don't know. So these eyes have a sticky back, uh, and I will cover them enough that it's not going to be a problem. Uh, let's see. Again, it's kind of one of those. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'll come back when I figure out where I want to go next. 
Okay, so I'm going to start on this side. I just took out some of the titanium wire. Again, uh, uh, this is para wire. You can use it in 26 gauge, and I'm just playing. So I started, put a few wraps on. Um, what I'm going to do is wrap stuff in between um, the wires and the two wires as I as I I'm going to go back and forth. Um, I have little baby cogs, and I have these AB double AB coated hematite cubes that sort of, I don't know if you can see, some of them look purplish. Um, yeah, you can see that on the screen. So some of them look purplish, some of them don't. So let me just zoom in just a smidge and see where we're at so you can see a little bit more. Um, this isn't so much a technique video. This is a crate with me. Let's have some fun together. So uh, I'm just going to take this and bend it so that they sort of start on the same sort of angle. So it makes it easier for me to weave between. And to create my spacing, I might as well start right away. I'm just going to grab my um, one of my hematite beads. Now these are nice and um, you can use like cubes, all kinds of fun stuff. If I can get it to go on my broke. Okay, so that gives me my spacing. I'm holding onto the tail thread, tail wire, I should say. To me, it's almost the same thing, but okay, hold on to that. Hold on to that. Stick the cube in the middle. Yay. Okay. So, I got started. Make this so I can get at it. And let's put a few wraps in. One. Two. Three. Four. Hmm. Now this is going to spin, which is fine, because steampunk can have moving parts. It's kind of fun that way. Um, let's see. Do I want these to go on the outside, towards the center, or do I want them to stay? So I'm trying to figure out how I want to attach these babies so that they stay flat, because I want them to be seen in the middle. Um, so I need to do a few more wraps. So that's my brain is thinking right now. I've got 15 things going on in my head along with filming this thing. Let me turn this light off. It might make it a little easier for you to see. You won't get so much shadow. Move that out of the way. Do, 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 do. Okay, I need to move it over more because if I don't, I'm not gonna be able to put this inside. See, if I put that there right now, it's gonna butt up too tight. Um, yeah, it's gonna butt up too tight. I need to get a few more wraps in, and that's all I'm thinking about right now is that it's got a, I got to get far enough away from this cube to be able to put a couple of these cogs in. Okay, so I could do a figure eight to put a cog in, which means I would take the wire. Let's take a look at this cog here. I take the wire and I'd go under the bottom, over the top, under the bottom, over the top, and back, and that would put it in and put two wires on either side. I could wrap one side, run the wire, um, you know, down farther. I could start another weaving wire on the other side and wrap from that side as well and continue. Um, I like having the, I like having some of the bare wire showing, so I don't want to do that method. So let's try a method. Let's see how this one works. Let's try the figure eight. So I'm going to come up from underneath, and again, we're, we're, we're playing, so I don't know if it's going to work, and I just lost my cog somewhere, yep, I don't know if you heard that, it went boink on the floor, let's get a copper one, start with a copper one, I'll dig it up later, I have uh, hardwood floors, thank goodness, okay, so you have this here. I'm going to bring it over top of this wire. Bring it back down under this wire. And now i got to feed it back up through my cog again. Now this is a, re a viewer request. They wanted to see some steampunk. They happen to love steampunk. So they wanted to see some steampunk. I don't do a lot of steampunk. And to be honest with you, it's well, most people don't like it. The majority of people don't like it. So I'm just trying not to end up with a kink in my wire here. There we go. 
Okay. So I don't know if you can see that, that that sort of put it in. Let me bring this up much closer. That figure eight sort of put it in there, right? So now I just got to space my wires a little bit better before I wrap some more. So it's sitting and I'm just moving it around to sit where I want it to sit. And then, as you can see, all this stuff still moves. Okay, so let's wrap a few more. One, two. Doesn't really matter the count, to be honest with you. I'm just trying to make sure that my wires are sort of staying beside each other. Not that the top one's attached to too much. It just has a little bit there and a little bit here, so it'd be pretty easy to move around right at the moment. And this is real time, so. And time for another hematite cube, I think. Do I want that much of a pattern? Do I want something else in there? Hmm. So I put this here. Now if I start to bring this around here. So this goes over top. See how this is going to go over top a little bit to hold it in? Except my, I just slid my... I'm going to wrap it in um, so I'm not worried about it, but that's basically how the lid of that eye would look to start at the top. I kind of like that. So um, I'm going to do two more hematite cubes and one more. Um, so it'll be cube, cog, cube, cog, cube, and then I'm going to come back. Okay, so I got the cubes on. I've done a little bit of shaping. Um, and I sort of squished everything up and I did some shaping so made it round I don't want this to look like a dragon eye I'm purposely not doing dragon eye I'm just doing eye um, yeah it's a dragon eye underneath but it doesn't really matter so I'm thinking that will look really cool over top of that eye but I need to fasten it on the outside here um, to be able to um, you know that's how it's going to go eventually so I can see that that's going to go there. I can bring this around even a little bit more so that it's sort of, you know, the eye is obviously sliding around at the moment. But when I put this, if I fasten it to, if you look at the back, I'm going to fasten it and wrap it around the back of this thing on the outside. So does that make sense? So I'll be wrapping like this and that'll force, if I hold that there, that'll cover the top of part of the eye and help to hold the eye in. So it's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so that's just the start. It gives you an idea. So now i got to do something with all this other wire. So let's work on the other side. Um, I'm just going to leave that piece of weaving wire. It was about half an arm span of weaving wire that I grabbed in that color. I want to do something completely different on this side. Um, hmm. So I think I need... Can cut off this little tail and when you're working on something like this and you're creating as you go make sure you tuck in all your tails and do all that stuff as you go because you might get to a place where you actually can't find the dang tail and you can't tuck it in but you can feel it but you can't get to it so so there's the one side um, I'm thinking I need um, something little on the inside here um, Maybe even a bead that I go around or something um, that's different than this side. That's the fun about steampunk is that it's always a little different from both sides. So do I want something like that? So this is what I do. I literally go, hmm, do I want something like that inside of that? Do I want to just put those through the, th that over the two wires? Um, no, I don't want to just put it over the two wires, but I could put it over that wire. No, that doesn't work for me. So I'm playing with what I have here to see what I want to do. So do I want to come up and around something? Um, or make a bigger cog on this side? See how I'm, I'm just sort of playing? 
um, with my material. And then I figure out how I fasten it. So that's kind of what I do. Oh, what about these things? These are really different. Um, these were fun beads I found at Michael's and I went, I need them just because they were cool. Um, <laughs> I don't like that there at all. Blech. So, uh, one of the things about steampunk is there's a lot of spirally bits and pieces that sort of snake back on itself and things like that. So, and you put things in the middle of those snaky back things. So let's get another piece of weaving wire and I'm thinking I'm going to do a, a coil on this one. It's pretty simple. No, actually, I'll leave that one bare. And on this one, I will do a snaky back piece that goes back and forth. I have all the extra wires on this one here for some reason. Um, and these two are pretty equal. So I'm going, hmm, snaky back would be better on this wire. But no one says I can't cross them over. Um, yeah, there's no rules. <laughs> That's the kind of cool thing about all of this. So I'm going to do a snaky back thing with this. So... Um, I'm going to coil this first, and then I'm, um, as I'm coiling, okay, so let me just show you. So I'm going to bring it out so it's out of the way. And I'm going to start coiling down here, and when I get a little distance, I'm going to um, probably put a bead in there, and then I'm going to turn it, um, or I can put a, a bead, uh, how do I explain this? Let me just work on it. I'll get coiled and I'll come back and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, I got started with the coil. I just cut it off. And I realized that there's some people out there that probably don't know how to start a coil. So I thought, well, let me explain what I do. So for me, I got a coil on around this wire here. The easiest way is to grab a tail, stick it in between the two wires so that, and I just hold on to the tail against my hematite bead here. And then I just bring my wire around. Uh, for me, it doesn't matter whether I coil um, now this is definitely um, much harder to do than if I take the coil and this I can do as well if you're not as I can take the coil and actually coil down at the end here okay so let me just zoom in even more and get some, rid of some of this stuff out of the way yeah so when I zoom in you won't see it okay so this is messy let me just pull this in Okay, squish, pull. Okay, cleaned up the coil. Okay, so you just wrap it around. And you can um, move your coil. You can move your coil. See, I just squished it down. Now, I don't know if you can see, sometimes you get little tiny bumps um, on the coil. You can also feel them. Um, and when that happens, or if you're overlapping a wire, you can feel it. Now that one felt like it wasn't right, so, and this is, um, you know, 18 gauge, like I'm just going to make a coil around here. Okay, so when I think I have enough to get me this space here before I can start something, and I want to be able to turn a corner with the coil before I add the bead, so I need to have about, I don't know, this much space, maybe. So that's what, a finger width apart? A finger width. So when I come back down to my coil here, do I have a finger width? No, not yet. Okay, so that's sort of, you just eyeball it as you go. I usually have, um, I love uh, Marvel comics, uh, anything sci-fi, um, anything like CSI-ish, you know, like crime dramas, criminal minds. So I usually have some kind of series or YouTube videos just streaming in the background um, for noise. Um, so there's my coil. It's as white as my finger. I think I can I go far enough. So just going to take my coil now and I'm just grabbing a hold of it and sliding it gently down, making sure this tail ends up in the middle here. Doop -doo -doo. Look. I have coil now next to my other one and it's a different color and that's okay because I wanted a different color. So this um, this is my bleh, this is called hematite. So it's 
26 gauge hematite from Parawire. So now I need to um, bend this in. So I'm grabbing hold of it, making sure that the wire, let me zoom back out a bit so you can slice and see the bigger motion. Because I think sometimes that's more important than the actual what I'm doing. So I'm just sticking my thumb in there and I'm sort of making it bend over itself. So when I get where it's bent over itself, see how I made a, like a loop there? I've got space now to stick something in there. And I can make that as narrow. I'm just squishing the whole thing now with my fingers. Um, if you're gonna squish with pliers, don't use, um, use your nylon jaw if you have to. So let's stick something in there. What do we want in there? I don't know. <laughs> so let's stick a four millimeter metal bead. Do, do, do. And I'm picking, obviously, picking a different color on purpose. See? Four millimeter metal bead. Do, to do, do. Stick it, pull hard. It's enough to hold it. And now I gotta flip the whole thing around. And I need to coil some more. Now I can't coil. And I'm catching on my tail thread, which I probably need to get rid of. Now I can't coil at the end because it's in there. So I'm going to, this is what I call, you know, like, you know when you think of the Swiss Alps and the Razorbacks, you know, back and forth? I'm going to do some, I'm going to put, uh, I don't know, I got two millimeter beads too, so um, this is going to go around the eye, this is going to stick out the side of the eye, so let's see, this is what we have if you're sort of looking at it so far. See, kind of cool, huh? So I'm going to do a few Razorbacks. I don't want a lot because I, I was sort of want to come to the middle here and then do some other things as I go down. And then I'm going to come back up with some wires and do some other things. So that's my, where my brain is going right now. Where it all ends up. Who knows. Okay, so let me do a couple of Razorbacks. That's how you do one. Um, and I'm going to coil some more. Flip my wire back on itself again. This way. Um, you know, put a bead in there. Coil some more. Flip it back and that kind of stuff. So I will be back when I get that done. Okay, so I am playing a little bit. Uh, I've got a couple of the leverbacks done. I fastened them to themselves over here. I need to come back again, but I'm not sure how I want to come back. I think I want to put a cog in here and wrap it. So I'm just checking and testing. So what I did was with that inner wire, I just took and wrapped it around itself and made a small, let's see if I can show you, a small loop there. See a small loop? So I brought it in close. I just brought it to the top, stuck three beads on in different sizes. I'm going to put a couple more beads on. And then I'm thinking I'm really at the stage where I need to think about fastening it to the back um, to see where I go from there. So, so I've got those beads on. I need a couple more. And I'm thinking, you know, this is on top right now. This could be under the bottom. doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm, I've got this weaving wire here, I've got this weaving wire here um, to fasten. So I'm thinking I could take this weaving wire and fasten um, some of this and from the back side um, and then this one on this side. So let's start, I'm going to take these beads off only because I know they're going to fall off until I get there. And we can stop and end uh, weaving wire any place we like. So. This is the basic shape that we're going to be doing, but I need to fasten this um, to so that the dragon eye gets fastened in. So I got to put it around the cog, and realistically, the dragon eye I could crazy glue it at this point, um, but I need to weave it in here so I can see that if I I don't know if you can see this. See where the weaving wire finishes there? I can see that it's in the spacing of the cog wheel here. So I definitely could put it down through there and then wrap around a couple times over here and then bring it across the back, wrap it around a couple times on this one, you know, like basically I'm actually not even worried about this one on the outside one, but I'm just going to sort of whip stitch it if that makes any sense um, with an extra sort of loop. Um, so let me just try and do this for you. So I'm going to move this one out of the way because I really, I'm not going to put this, I'm not fastening this yet. So I'm just meant moving it out of the way. I really don't need the eye in there yet, but we're going to just leave it in there so you can see how to work around it if it was glued in. Because until I fasten the second side, I really don't need the eye in there. 
So I've got the wire coming down. So I'm finding the end of the wire. And I need to come through one of the cog holes. So I'm just coming through one of the cog holes. Okay. And at this point, the eye can still move. So, see, I just can pull it right off. So it's coming down on one of the cog holes. I need to make sure what I'm trying to do is like zip up this edge here up to the top um, from where, okay, so right now my it's hanging out on this here. And I'm bringing it up and trying to get it so that um, everything is going to, this is going to make it to the top. It can even stick over the top a little bit. Um, so I gotta figure out where that's gonna lay. Okay, and then I can just bring this over and wrap back down through the hole here on this side and wrap it around. See, and I can do that a couple times just to make sure that that's stitched in. So that outside is now decided that it's going to be there. I'm just putting them beside each other, heading upwards because I'm heading upwards. So I laid this wire first and then the top wire above it next. So now I'm back here at the back. And I can take my wire to another hole and stick it through another hole. So let's stick it through the next hole. Sort of where the next cog is. Do, 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 see where it comes out? Oh look, it comes out on the other side of that hematite bead. And I'm watching, I'm not kinking. I'm pulling it through. So I'm just moving the wire over. Now I've got a little bit of space in, and if I pull hard, it'll it'll actually um, push the wire down in between. Um, let's put it there. Okay, so that works there. I'm just going to wrap that only once, and I'm going to come back and go into the next hole. And stick it out and I can tell by the wire that I can see in the back it's going to come out around the cog somewhere. Yep. And I'm just wheeling around trying not to get any kinks in my wires and making sure it stays on the one side of the cog. So you're going to have this sort of whip stitch on the back just like if you were sewing and now that came right up through the cog. I don't want it through the cog. So let's back it out a little bit. See, I can back it out. And let's see if I can get that to come up in a different place. Because I don't want it through the cog. Let's put it up through here. But I need to come through here first. And through there. See, now I made sure that it's not in the cog. It's on the other side of the cog. Okay, so this is going down here. This is coming up here. There we go, whip stitched. Yay! And I'm going to bring it out. Now I can bring it around the cog and rest in beside the cog where there's some space. Okay. So now I need to lift this up. So I'm sticking my thumb underneath because I don't want it to get too tight and not be able to get around the eye. So I'm lifting it up, making like a little sandwich spot, or stuffing pita pocket with my wire. See how that's starting to make space for the sandwich? Yay! Okay, so at this point, I probably want to keep the eye in there. Yeah, keep that on that side. So now I need to come back up. I got to go through the cog, and then I'm looking at the front, and I can see I'm, I'm coming up through that um, next co little baby cog on the top, but I don't want to. I want to come up between the hematite bead and the cog. So now I'm just pulling the wire through, and that's all you're doing is you're just finding nice ways so it doesn't look ugly from the front and from the back. You know, yeah, the back's going to look uglier than the front because you're designing to the front, but 
Okay, so that gives me another whip stitch. And I can bend my wire around. And make sure it's forming around that eye. And I'm just pushing the eye where I want it to go. So I'm forming those blocks of hematite and cogs, as you can see, are just laying down the one side. So I'm going to continue to do this all the way up. And then I am going to, I'll come back and show you how I sort of start to attach down the other side. Don't worry about where these are going right now. We'll figure that out when we go get there. Okay, so I've got this side fastened. I, this wire goes this far. Um, I can see though that I can fasten this piece um, before I go any further to the side here. So I'm going to fasten this to the side here. I'm going to put the beads on here and then I'm going to do some fastening um, with this wire. I'm going to continue. I'm going to leave this wire once it's fastened sitting here ready to go with the next phase of what I'm doing here. I'm going to put the beads on. Uh, I may take a scrap piece of wire and I'm going to fasten at the bottom so this eye is then uh, in and I'll come back when we get this all fastened in. Um, uh, I'm, I'll show you how to put the cog in and then we can go from there. This will be a long video. It's a great with me, okay? So those of you who are going, what the heck is she doing next? Um, I'm sorry. This is how the creative process works. Okay, so I put the beads on and um, I'm going to try and show you up close here. So what I did is I, I ran the wire um, around the back and then I came up and I actually fed it over top once on this, put it through a bead, put it through another bead, brought it back through the first, the second, the first bead I added and then brought it back around the back. So it added this little spoiny bit on the top, sort of, sort of extension of the beads that were already in line. And then um, I f put beads on the wire and then it wrapped um, the cogs around. So, and then I came back this way and wrapped around so that it set up this sort of two wires and two wires um, beside each other sort of here on either side of the bead, the beads, because I did that all the way through. And then I took it to this point. Um, as you can see, it's wrapped around the cog again here. And then back up to this point, and you can see my eyes in. Um, and then I started to sort of look at what I wanted to do here. So it looks like I need to do one more, and I'm going to put a bigger bead in. I'm thinking you know, a silver bead would might be nice there. So, um, this is actually, uh, fire polished with a special coating on it. So, um, let's see, it's called, uh, check six millimeter fire polish, uh, prairie, but it's got a special silver coating, uh, or sort of weird coating on it that makes it look like it's silver. So I'm going to probably put it so the silver shows. Um, or some of the metal shows and put that in there as I come along and then I sort of Before I drop more beads on the floor. I've been chasing beads since I've been gone um, I smacked my table and knocked about 20 beads on the floor. Yay! <laughs> Favorite habitat of the beads and here I'm thinking I need to have I need I need a little more brass So I can put this on after I get that bead wrapped. So I'm gonna continue to wrap I wrap the bead on when I get to the other side, I wrap back. Remember, you wrap around and then put the bead on, wrap back. And then I'm going to uh, then wrap, feed it through the bead again and then wrap, continue the wrap to here and um, put this bead on here. And this is going to sort of bring me to the bottom. So then I have all four wires at the bottom and I can go from there. I know it's kind of a strange looking. I'm not sure if I like that one or not. Let's try a hematite one. I need something different. And that's the other thing with having lots of colors is that you can, you know, you can play around with what you're doing with each of the colors. So not sure what I want to do. I may just add a few more beads on that one or I may just leave it wire wrapped. I need something there. So, um, and eventually I think I'm going to hang uh, a jump ring from here, some chain to something hanging from the bottom with the key. So that's where my brain is going. And um, yeah, so let me finish doing putting this in. I'll figure out what's going to fit in here. And then we'll move on to the bottom pieces. Back and I figured I better explain what I'm doing. So, 
Uh, when I last left you, I had to figure out what I put here. So I, I found that sort of, uh, it's a 20 gauge little short piece that I'm actually used for big jump rings. I just took a piece of it, uh, put it there, and then I took that wire um, and sort of moved it out of the way. And then there was a piece that was coming from where the beads were that had the sort of this wire uh, attached to it. So I took it and I, I coiled it, coiled it, coiled it, and then I decided I, I would spiral it, spiral it, spiral it, and it's finished here. So I cut it off at that point. And this is still loose, so I'm going to have to, um, you know, fasten it down. So I still need to fasten this down. This is just a loose coil. I'm just playing with this idea. So then I took, um, actually this one here with the copper one is the one with the, uh, nope, that's the one from this side. So there was uh, another one from this side that came around. So there's one here and then there was the second one. And the second one I had a little bit of coiled copper that I had pre-coiled um, and I just stuck it on here. See, it, it, it moves, it actually moves. Just fixing the coils a little bit, spacing them out better. Um, and that's what you can do if you need to. You stick your nail between them and space them out better. So I decided to echo this and it ended up being this wire here. And then um, I just put it around the back. I just put it around the back of this and then I started this coil. And I'm thinking of bringing this up sort of like this, fastening this in here and then making uh, a spiral to end it up in this end here. So that's sort of where I'm at. And this is um, some designing that I've been sort of just sitting here playing with. So I'm thinking of, we'll take chain from here. I need to do still something with this wire and I may just do something similar to this, just a little one uh, in here. Or I may br just bring this to the back and do a coil around the back, uh, just to cover some of the back or whatever. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this one yet, but I'm gonna bring a chain from here and bring it to here and then use jump rings. And I'm thinking of having actually three dangles. I, I'm actually liking this as sort of like a design element. Let me just bring this in a little bit closer. So this is sort of what I'm thinking. I'm playing with my camera here so you can see it. So the eyes fastened. I actually used super new glue and made sure that it's glued in. I will seal the back of it so I, you don't have to worry about scratching the, the backing off of this or anything. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking of using this like this is sort of the three pieces dangling. This is just a funky coil bead that I made, a key, and just a square, and I'll just use, um, with this one I'll just use jump rings, I'll probably just use a jump ring for this one, and for this one i use a head pin, um, maybe with a ball on the end of it or something. And those can be attached to the chain, so I'm going to leave a couple of links of chain here, so this is sort of loose, and the chain will come from here to here, so it'll look like the chain is catching and holding it on there. So that's where I'm going with this. Um, I'm going to continue doing some more of this, get some of this fastened down, figure out what I'm going to do with this, and then I'll come back to show you the chain process. And um, as you can see, I have another wire here still at the back. Did I make sure what I'm doing with it? <laughs> I, have too many. I, I started with four wires and only one's ended. So there's one, two, three, so yeah. So that was the copper one that I brought around the bottom here and I just brought it to the back. So I just made a loop and brought it to the back. So I've got a couple of wires to figure out what I'm gonna do with them to finish them off. So uh, I'm hoping you're liking it so far. I'm hoping you're learning something. Uh, it's a little heavy, um, it's just my own opinion. It's a little heavy, it could be a little lighter, more coiling and spirals and less, but this is really sort of like Jules Verne, nautical, steampunk, uh, that's what it's sort of reminding me of. And at one point when I had all the legs down, I thought, oh, octopus. And then this would have been a great octopus head if I had more wires. I could have just added more um, and just, you know, at that point done legs. So there's lots of ideas running through my brain. Anyways, I will be back when I get a few more things attached and we'll talk some more. Okay, so I figured out what I'm going to do. So I took the this wire here that was coming from the front that was just hanging out in the back here and I just made a, a spiral, another spiral, and then I just have it sitting here. I just tucked it in as tight as I could to the side um, and I will probably spiral that around the back and then fasten it at one spot. Um, the second thing I did was take this other wire which is sitting here and I just bent it to sort of mimic the other side. So it mimics the other side. 
if I hold that here, I sort of get this look. And I'm a little happier with that. Now I'm debating, if I do this, to stick a cog in behind here, whether that's adding more layers of stuff that's needed or not needed. And I think it's not needed. So I'm going to leave it open so that there is some open pieces um, of work. So I'm going to finish off this silver wire here. Um, I'm going to need to attach up here. So I'll use a little copper scrap um, weaving wire to make um, just attach it here, sort of like I did here. Um, I'm going to finish the spiral here create a spiral over on the other side to match and then we'll come back and see what we're going to do with the back and what's left of the pieces that are hanging out because this piece will be hanging out these two will be gone so we just have this one piece to deal with here um, and I might just do a, a small spiral up the top here and call it a day but we'll see because um, I need to still attach the chain and I should, said I would t uh, show you how to do that and I'm trying to not make this video like 400 miles long so we'll see how it goes and uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so I've gotten everything fastened down. Um, what I did with that wire that came around here, the one with the spirals on it, I put a bead on it and then I took it and put it through the front of this and then brought it around the back, cut it off and wrapped it. So we're done. Um, I still need to seal the back, uh, and I'll use clear nail polish probably to seal the back, or lacquer, I'm not sure. Um, so these are red ones, but they're the same size, I just moved them into a different bag. So they're 18 gauge, 3 16th aluminum jump rings, um, 0.5 uh, millimeter. So I'm using these to attach the chain. So, and I'm going to use this uh, chain. Yeah, that chain. Okay, so <laughs> let's get started with the chain attachment part. So I've got a length of chain. The first thing I'm going to do is get these jump rings out of the bag. Free the jump rings. And they're good size, but I do want them actually to be decent sized. Um, and the only thing I didn't grab was a head pin, so let me grab that too while I'm at it. I've got my little findings box underneath. So let's find out head pin, a fun head pin. Okay, so there's a head pin with some, it looks like a twisted knot at the end. I probably don't need to go that crazy, but these are, see, it has like a weird little knot at the end. So, so. You can hear me getting in and out of my box. This is a really big findings box. And then I have two other small finding boxes that have clasps and stuff in them. These are all just things like jump rings and weird stuff. Chain and whatever. Alright, so let's open this up. I'm going to need two pairs of flat nose pliers. I got my uh, so I'm just opening up my jump ring. I'm going to stick the one in a chain on it. Make sure it's going to fit. Please, please. Yep, lots of room. And then I need to stick it on here. So I need to figure out where I want to stick it on here. Do I want to try to stick it in between the bead? And I think I do. I want it to sort of go up above as much as possible so that when it... Okay, see if I can get this so you can see it. So if I get it up higher, it's going to hang beside this side. Um, do I want it on that side? There's an awful lot going on that side. Maybe I should put it on this side. I think I will. Because there's a lot going on there, so I'm going to put it on this side and hang it from this side. Okay, I'm good. So this is what happens when you're designing something. I put it up there and went, eh, there's too much stuff already over there. It just feels overwhelming. For me. Everybody's style is different. So I just attached it there. It's like a pocket watch chain, right? Now I need to uh, do a quick wire up loop with this, so I'm going to stick that on there. Let's stick a funky bead underneath that. It's a different color than copper. Let's find a little baby hematite bead just to separate the color out. There we go. This is a metal bead, but it's... There we go. So I just made it look kind of, I don't know, like what? I'm not sure. Okay. 
I'm just going to do a quick wrap loop because I need a way to fasten it, right? So over she goes, over she goes, over she goes. Make sure she's in the middle, she's good enough. And bring it, wrap it around once, twice, and I'm good. So let's cut that off. So as you can see, my board it looks like a mess, and that's exactly how it looks when I'm actually working. So I have not made one of these before. I have not even attempted to make this particular type of, with an eye in it, uh, sort of. Um, okay, so I'm happy with that. That's ready to go. This we're just going to hook onto somewhere. Okay, so let's get some of these junk rings apart. There's one. These things are always stuck together. Yeah, these are really tough jump rings. These are, I bought these. And I bought them in several colors. So I have blue ones and black ones and silver and gold. And so I need to figure out where I want to attach this. I want the bead to hang. Let's see if I put it at the back. Towards the back anyways. If I can get it in the towards the back. Let's separate these out a bit. Let's see if I can. Whoa. I just squished my bead. I don't know if you saw that. I just made my bead rectangle instead of... Oh, there we go. Make it back square. So I'm going to try to pull this open a little while I put that jump ring in. This was just me experimenting with my flat nose pliers to see if I could do a square bead out of wire. Um, so I'm just trying to feed this jump ring up and around one wire. Ta-da! I got it around one wire in the middle and then we'll fix the bead so there's one so my bead looks a little wonky now so I'm just I'm just bending and tweaking my bead so it looks a little bit better there we go so there's my bead on this um, how do I want to hang it yeah I want that to hang forward so let's put one on that one too where's my opening Figures, I got a closed one. For, never happens. Stick that on one. Let's close it. So that's not closed yet. I know you can't see it, but it's not closed yet. Believe me. Okay. So there's one, two, those are ready. That one, I might as well put, let's see if we can find the opening on this baby. Now I'm using my nail, I'm actually using my nail to try to find the opening on this sucker. There it is. And it's so well sealed I can't even find the opening. Which is kind of sad that I'm opening it. There we go. So I'm opening it. I'm going to put this one on one too, so it's got lots of movement. Okay, so I have three there that are closed, and I can either put them on three separate pieces of chain, or I can bring them together on one or two jump rings. Let's bring them on, or I could hang them from this. Um, okay, so this is design, design decision time. I have these three here. The chain's going to come hang from here. come down through and can hang to here and these three could hang off that. Yeah, that might work. Okay, so figuring out the length. Well, you just put it where you think you want to put it. Um, I want this to droop a little bit beside all of this. I need a jump ring, so I need to cut it off about here. And, you know, if, you, if it's not right, it's not right. There's my broken link. Move that out of the way. Okay, you get another jump ring. A couple more out of my baggie. Alright, 
so I need this end of the chain on here and I need this end of the chain on here because basically I'm making the chain hang back down again and I need to fasten this on here somewhere so I'm putting it around the copper loop only Things sliding in my pliers. Uh, uh, there we go. I'm good. So this is what I have right now. So this is what I have right now. And that chain feels a little long, so I may actually have to go in and take a couple more links. But hey, that's the way you work it. Now I don't need much here. I need a link or two. So I'm just going to leave like two links because the jump ring is going to take space. Cutting it. Open. Try to, I always try to get rid of the, the lousy one that I just cut open and, and throw it away so I don't have it in my bag of chain. So it just has a couple of pieces sticking out here. I'll take one of these jump rings. Open it a little bit farther. I know every, people have been asking, you know, how do you actually make this into a piece of jewelry? So this is how I do it. Um, I do all the little, so this is sort of the pendant piece and then I'm doing the rest of it. Okay, be nice. Guess I could have opened it further. Get it on that link. And I just, the jump rings like to jump, so that jump ring just jumped off my table. I have, I have to sweep my floor every day, otherwise I'd be stepping on beads and jump rings and all kinds of stuff all the time. Okay, we're going to really open that one because it's being persnickety and I don't want to have more trouble. So basically I'm trying to get it into that sep second loop. There we go. Yay! Put this on. Yay! Close it up. I could actually see this being attached to a choker piece. There we go. I could actually see this being attached to a choker piece um, and feeding the, the ribbon in like a lark's head or feeding the ribbon through and back and turning this into a choker piece and this would hang down the front right in your sort of clavicle area. Would be kind of cool. ring. Mm, don't need another jump ring. Let's open these jump rings to put them on the sloop. Now I seem to have when I hang when it hangs, it's gonna move around but it's gonna settle based on weight. So I'm gonna put this one on one side of this bar so that they sort of divide up a little bit. Close that again. Whoop. These are really good jump rings. I can do stuff like that. They don't mar mark, which is awesome. I got these in a place in Canada called Myomai oh My, My oh My Beads. Um, I had struggled trying to find good uh, aluminum jump, jump rings that weren't super soft. Um, that came in colors so that I could play. Because um, I did a little bit of chainmail a long time ago. I don't do it anymore. And um, I found this company. And it's a Canadian company. So... Sorry guys, uh, I'm sure they ship everywhere, but if I remember, I will put their name underneath and you can Google them. Um, I haven't had to buy anything from them for a while, and I can't say that they're the cheapest place anywhere, but they were good quality jump rings, and that's what I wanted. There we go, close that one down. So there's the two hanging so far. And last but not least, the one that's on the wire. I think that this one needs a second one because it needs some movement. It's not going to move the way it is. And I need it to move. At least I want it to move. See? And then it moves around. Put it on the outside. Come on. It's always too chintzy. I never want to open drum rings as far as I need to.
because I have to close them again, I think. Not one of my favorite activities, and I find it very hard on my hand, my old senior hands. Okay, so this is what we have. I don't know if you can see this. I wish I could show you from a better angle. This is sort of what we have. This feels too long for me. Um, I really like the dangle at the bottom. I like the way that that hangs. This would be an awesome brooch on a jacket. It would be super awesome. Um, so I'm going to take off, I'm going to bring it up so that it hangs to about, or I can fasten it higher up. And maybe that's what I'll do is I'll just fasten this higher up. Because I want the chain to hang about there. Okay, does that make sense? I want it to touch the other brass, but it doesn't have to. And all this moves and dangles and moves around, and I like that. Um, it's on a piece of jewelry that you're wearing. And you have these three pieces, and this doesn't matter whether it flips back or forward. This key's good on both sides. All these are good on both sides. So you have the charms, and this is the eye. So this will be a little focus for you. I moved this over eventually, so you can see more of the little beads that were in there. I added that bead. So I think I'm going to move this to this spiral and hook it from the spiral down. And I think I'm good. I'm So let's see. I told you I could probably make it into a choker. Okay. So this is bead cording, satin sheer bead cording. Let's see if I can get it out of here. Oh, these things are always pain to get out of the back of them. They never make it easy. Like, why do they make it so hard? You should be able to get these things out of the packaging. Without... So this, I've got a few of them here. Four, five, four, I don't know, two. Two with a couple of cords. Okay, even better. And they already have the findings on them. I picked these up somewhere. I don't even remember. I've had them for a long time. and never... Choker sort of went out of style. So this is choker length. It's just two pieces of ribbon. I would steam this first before I played with it. But you could definitely take it... I'm trying to think where I would put it. I don't like the findings. I would change the findings on the end of this. Yeah. So without the findings, <laughs> you could stick your cord through here, through the one side of this loop, um, put a bead on it, put it back, put it through the bead, and then put it back through the back side. So basically what you're wanting to do is, okay, there's the satin one. I'm just going to separate them out. Okay, so you're going to put this through here. But pretend this is the end of it, right? So you're cording, you bring it through, the cording is going to this way on this side, right? To your choker. You bring this through here, you put a bead, uh, put this through a bead, a bigger bead that stands up top here that's going to hold it in place. Or you can. Um, Wrap it with a little coil, put a coil over top of it, whatever you want that's going to hold it. And then you're going to bring it back down the loop on the other side of the same loop so that it functions like a button. Does that make sense? Like the like a button up top. And this doesn't work because it's not the right shape. But, you know, basically like a button up top. The, the stuff would come through, the stuff would come through the other side, and it would come back down and then you'd have... See what I'm saying? Or you can start if you have attention to do a choker and do two loops to start. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Let me move this over here. The other thing you could do at this point now is a lark's head knot. And that's what I my plan was, is just to do a lark's head knot. Gonna find the opening if I can. I'm twirling it around trying to find the opening. I think I found it. I think I did. There we go. Open it farther, it'll be so chinzy. <laughs> I'm talking to myself, not to you, you guys. Because I get chinzy with opening things and then I can't get them off things, and I can't get them on things. So let's put it up here. There we go. See how that looks. There we go. That's closed. So that hangs down a little bit behind it. Or hangs down in front of it. Be much better length. 
see if I can get it laid out so you can see what it would look like. So there's your steampunk piece. Um, I like it. I think it's cool. It's very mixed metal, um, which is cool for me. I like having mixed metal. We've got all kinds of metals in here. You've got the eye that sort of is fun. Um, it's definitely not dragonish at all. So let's see if I can hold this so that you can see it. Without everything in the background, let's hold it sideways so you can see it. So there's our steampunk piece that we just created on the spot with Create With Me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you had fun and learned something. Um, and that you um, learned sort of how people create stuff. And that's how people create stuff. And some things turn out phenomenal. This I like. Um, some things I turn, I, when I do it, I go, eh, what did I just do? And I put it in my think pile. So, <laughs> to think about it. So, yeah, just have some fun, create, um, enjoy the process, and you never know what you're going to come up with. And um, take care and keep on making from Manny's Makings. Bye.